everyone, welcome to my last video of this year. <laughs> um, today we're going to play with watercolors, watercolor paint. And this time it will be real time, so no speeded up video, so if you like, you can paint along with me. Anyway, let's get on with the painting. So for today's little project, I'll be mainly using water-soluble products. And before I move on, uh, if you hear a lot of squeaking, that's my chair. I kind of have a squeaky chair, so ignore it when you hear it. Anyway, for, um, for sketching, I'll be using a Graphitone water-soluble pencil from Derwent. And I'll be using Brusho, Brusho paints. And maybe some Derwent water soluble pencils and watercolor paint from Van Gogh Van Gogh whatever <laughs> anyway um, for today's video I'm going to draw a little tit for uh, with watercolors no not that kind of tit but the birdie kind of tit <laughs> um, uh, in a bit of a winter team because, well, it's almost Christmas. That's only a couple of days away, so yeah. Better get drawing. Anyway, uh, so first I have to kind of sketch down a bird and decide where I want to have it. Uh, I, by the way, decided to use a water-soluble pencil because that will disappear once I add water to it so we won't see any lines underneath the watercolor so I think I want the bird to be here somewhere and well there was a squeak sorry about that and then I want the twig it's going to be sitting on I don't know it looks very basic right now but I promise it will it will look good. It should actually look something like this because I already did a practice, but this is more of a summer-ish, spring-ish version and I want to do a winter, winter-ish one. So, yeah. Um, twiggy, twiggy, twiggy. More twiggies. I'm not going to sketch very detailed because the whole thing will not be very detailed. It's just some guidelines to see where it all goes and to help me with the further thing. So down to the bird. Uh, I think I'll have to head here somewhere. Funny little fellows. See them all the time. Just miss having a garden because when you're on a flat apartment, you don't see a whole lot of birds. The only birds you are going to see here are like crows and pigeons and and stuff. Not any of those cute little birdies. Um, I'm using a reference photo from Paint My Photo for this one. Though I'm not going to be very precise though. It's going to be a fun little sketchy thing quick little watercolor because I can't have the video to be too long to at this rate so yeah if you wanna do this one too feel free to do it and if you have done it then well it would be nice to see it so show it off and link it to me on this uh, on the comment section of this video. I would love to see it. I think the tail should be a little bit more like this. Because it was a bit droopy. A droopy tail. Like it's a very sad bird or something. It's that sad. At least I don't think it is. Some feet.
to the twig a bit lower. So messy, but yeah, we're almost almost done sketching the little beak and the eye should be somewhere over here. Make sure it's not a bit too high. Uh, yeah, I guess got it done. A bit of the sketching, a bit of the markings to help me out. Well, isn't that a cute little bird? Birds are so cute. I guess I'm done sketching. So what I'm going to do now is get a brush, um, dip it in water, and wet the paper. And try to avoid the twig and the bird. So they don't get colored in the process because we want to do that separately okay uh, oh let's go put some shit on uh, paint I really love brush oh it's so fun I don't need a lot of it because it explodes it's really cool, you can make so much fun backgrounds with it. Oh, the spreads. It's not really There we go. Help them along a bit. It's okay if there's a little bit on the twig or the bird. That doesn't matter. But yeah, look how cool that is. All those colors. There's a bit of yellow, green, blue in there. It's really cool. So yeah, let's help this a bit. Funky, quick, cool background. Mm -hmm. And if you think like, well, I don't know, I need some more. And just tap some more down. You can remove the the caps, but I just punctured the hole in it because you don't need much of that powder. So at least I don't waste any materials that way. Anyway, let's get on with it. A little bit more pulling through the edges. There. And the other side. Between the twigs. And we'll repeat the steps. I'm using sea green. Prussian blue and ultramarine blue for the brush O.
Um, let's see if I can swipe some the bird. Well, nope, it won't swipe. So, birdie's gonna get some brush on them. Too bad. <laughs> uh, spread some of this. I guess it would have worked better if I masked mask down a bird, but uh, it's just a quickie, or at least I hope. <laughs> I tend to get lost into details and fun and everything every now and then, so you yeah, have to make sure you don't get too long-winded on this one. Sure is fun, but we don't have time for that. And the last part of the background Top top. So yeah, you can do really cool stuff with this. guess we have a quick but fun little experimental background for now okay let's move on with the bird I'll just do that with regular watercolor watercolor paint and I guess I'll just start with the belly which is kind of yellow but I'll take a warmer yellow against all that blue and cool, cool colors. And I may have, should have let it dry the background, but, ah, uh, well, it's fun. Maybe we get some, some lucky accidents here. Along with the speckles of brush out that were caught on the bird. Doesn't matter. Uh, mm, let's take some blue and some shading into the bird. Some cool, interesting color effects. Always fun. Uh, I'm going um, a lot, sorry about that. Green. And a bit of more blue. Ah, so maybe it's fun to try and use some, some salt on the bird. On the brush, so it doesn't really work that well. On a regular watercolor, it does. And what I'll do, I'll just pause the camera for a wee bit and let it dry. I'll be back in a sec. And we're back. It's all dry and it looks like a terrible mess. But never worry when something looks like a mess. Because there are always ways to fix things. At least I never worry. And with this piece I'll just let it surprise me. Whatever it becomes. Maybe it becomes totally... But we'll see. Anyway, continuing on with the bird, I'll take some Payne's Grey. Oh wait, not maybe. I'll just start off with a Patalo Blue for the markings of the bird. Give him a nice blue hood. 
And there goes my reference. Gotta love screensavers. And a bit more color, but not too much. Keep it subtle. Can't say that from the background, but no matter, it's cool. And I'm watering this down because it's too much. Ooh, making a mess. Maybe I can lift some of it. Ooh, making even more mess. Oh wow, this is going fantastic. Not. You're making a mess. I know, I'm sorry. Anyway, it'll be all right. Just continuing. With the darker parts of its feathery goodness. Love colorful birds. They're so much fun to to draw and to paint. They really are. Blue here. And I guess a bit of paint's grey. A bit, that's quite a lot it seems. Though with watercolours it always dries a bit lighter than when you apply, so if just like like it happened, it looks like, oh my god, it looks so dark, oh jeez, what am I supposed to do then? Just don't panic, you can always lift it with water a bit and it dries lighter. But yeah, uh, I'm making a bit of a mess here. I ain't no watercolors pro or whatever, just for funs. Though I must say the first time I was painting this it was going a lot smoother and easier. I'm a bit messing it up right now. Painter, terrible. Oh, we'll just go on. Go on and see where it ends. Right here, annoying. The colors flow a bit. We've been messy this whole time, so let's just get on with the messiness. I don't care anymore. Maybe it will turn out awesome by complete accident. And maybe not. <laughs> Guess the latter will happen, but we'll see. We'll see. I'll always stay positive. You never know what you're gonna get until you're done. If you ever get done. That's always the question with me. I always take ages to finish something. Even when I say I'm going to, to do it fast this time. Or faster. Messy, messy, messy.
um, but if you're trying to do this one and you don't have like all the supplies that I've got like the brushes or whatever you can you can do it with whatever whatever medium you've got if you just have watercolors do it with watercolors if you've got paints or uh, I mean watercolor pencils do it with the pencils it can all be done no problem at all And I'm really making a mess. Oh gosh, it's terrible. Oh well, um, putting a bit of brown in the wing. A bit brownish. Well, this it is fun though, because this one is turning out completely different color-wise as the first one I've done. Though I must say, in the first one I've used cheaper paper, and I didn't use the brush out. I used the uh, um, liquid watercolor for the background. So yeah, it looks a bit more uh, how am I supposed to say it a little bit more staged not as unorganized as this one like the surprise the surprise backgrounds you're going to get with the brushos but just spritzing and throwing the powder on <laughs> But I don't know, maybe this one won't be that bad as it looked with the messy messiness. A bit more green in the bum. And then the tail, yeah, no, it's supposed to be a yellow bird, but like I said, I'm not following the photo so much color wise I'm just making this my own little funny experiment color explosion thing because playing with colors is is a lot of fun and let's put in an eye Birdie you look so messed up. Messed up in the face. But we'll make it right, I promise. And I'm talking a lot of nonsense. I'm not used to talk so much, really. <laughs> This is looking quite silly right now, I suppose. Ever the critic. Pull this more up. Put a bit more dark here. Let's 
small little details. Oh boy, this might end up being a long video after all. Oh man, I'm not good at doing things quick or fast and not paying attention to any details at all. I'm such a detail junkie. Old habits die hard. I really don't think I'll ever get rid of it. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't. I just love details. Big round blue. That's not a lot of blue. Okay, well, that's this bit of a dark thing on his chest, oh, it's blotchy, that was still wetter than I thought it would be, lifting, lifting, things up again but it's not so bad it's actually actually quite quite cool a little bit more leave here for a bit of shade and I think I already lost where his leg should be at but I guess I'll find his leg later <laughs> so yeah you can See that on the belly and everything, the pencil lines are gone because it simply evaporates with the water you add. It's, that's the nice thing about using water soluble graphites with watercolor paintings and such. And a bit of blue in the tail, and then a pink out. Let it dry again before I'll go mix splotches somewhere else again. I think I all messed up enough already in the video today. We don't want any more messed up messing around. Be right back. Alright, well, I suppose it won't be long until this one is finished now, so let's give him feet. The poor thing doesn't have feet. How else is he supposed to hang on to his branch without feet? So let's quickly do that. Cute little feet. This bit is dark. It's blended oh, with the rest of his body. It is really cool the effect you can get with salt on a bit of damp water watercolor. It's really cool. You can get the illusion that it looks soft and feathery that way. It takes some practice because the salt thing only works uh, when when the paper paint is damp and not too wet or too dry because then it won't work. So if you like to try it then I guess get a couple of scrap papers and and try it practice
and the little burger has feet. Okay, now I guess I'm going to give him a little bit of a shading in the face or in the, in the white parts. He looks a bit too flat there. Well, let's give him a quick shade up there. A bit of cheek. Maybe this will turn into something after all. It doesn't look as bad as it seemed to be going a little while ago. So yeah, on to the branches. Guess I'll just do a bit of brown. Oh, the branch has gone a bit lost in the background here, but that's okay. It's kind of kind of cool. I kind of like it. I, the first one I did of this birdie was a lot more controlled and and behaved than this one. This is more messy and out of control, but somehow I do think it looks better than the other one. I'll keep them side by side when, when this one is done so you can see and judge for yourself. But yeah, sometimes when you're feeling something is turning on a failure it doesn't always have to end up being a failure, you just have to keep going. And if you think like, oh, this is not going to turn out to anything good, just keep going and you'll never know. It might turn out to be cool anyways. That's the fun thing about watercolor. It goes anywhere. You can control it, but you can also let it go crazy on its own. The brusho the brusho paint is is perfect for that. You never really know what you're gonna get and that that makes it so fun. Hmm, a bit more darker brown, I suppose. Let's add a bit of darkness here. And maybe a hint of blue. Let's make it stand out a bit less. So it's, it's very red, brownish compared to the background. And I don't know, I just like, like the subject to be part of the background, at least. 
like it fits in there. Sometimes it just looks as if it, as if it is cut out and pasted on, on the background, and that's just, nah. I don't like that. I want it to be in sync with each other. Like you can say, oh, the bird and the twig, it belongs there. So to get that, it, it always works to bring back some colors in the main subject of, of your background to get a more realistic look, even though you're going a bit messy or less detailed as you normally would. Some more twigs. More brown here for those loose twigs. Well, ain't this fun? Well, I guess. Twiggy is as good as done too. Because I'm going to correct that part on the bird's face that I messed up a wee bit. Because that should be should be white or light at least. And I got it a bit dark because well the colors ran a bit over. The place. So I'm using a bit of white ink. It's a bit of a lot of white ink. Doesn't have to be so white, it just That's what I mean, if you make a mistake, don't panic. There's always ways to correct things to a certain extent, of course, but yeah, unless you're gonna be like, yeah, but that's cheating. I'm doing a watercolor color piece and I'm not going to use any other mediums apart from watercolor, then yeah, then you have to be really careful not to mess up like I did. Um, let's add a wee bit more detail, my gel pen, a little sparkle in the eye, and on the beak, because the beak got a bit lost in the mess I created when making the background. Too much. Cause I kind of like 
how it looks this way. Just some loose feathers here and there. A bit on the leg here. Just some subtle little pieces of detail. Well, I guess the birdie is done. Now some some snow on the branches. Because it doesn't look very wintry yet. Well, it doesn't look very wintry in the real world outside either because it's way too warm for this time of, time of year. It looks like bloody spring, I mean butterflies are out and about and I even got bitten by mosquitoes a couple of nights ago I mean in the middle of December it's it's outrageous but yeah but nah I want I want some real wintry thing going on here I'm using calligraphy ink from Windsor and Newton, by the way, for the snow effect here. I'm using a wet brush so it won't be too stark and as you can see it blends in with with the watercolor a bit so yeah that's quite nice that's what I was looking for to get there's so many ways you can use any kind of medium it just comes down to experimenting with them see what you like, what you get if you use a lot of water or if you don't use a lot of water the results will all be very different depending on what kind of technique you use and the way you use it Yeah, just experiment. Experimenting is what making art so much fun. So I really like to do all this really detailed, correct stuff, like uh, hyper-realism and all that. I really love that, but sometimes it's just fun to unwind and do something completely opposite, to go a bit crazy with your strokes and whatever not, colors and play away with the entire thing and let's do something else messy a bit I hope it goes right splotches oh 
that is so much fun. A lot of people are like, oh, but it's scary, you might mess it up and stuff, but... But it's fun, really. Don't be afraid to experiment. Because the, the end result might even surprise you. And it's okay if some splotches get on the bird. That's totally okay. Bit more down there. Need a wetter brush. It's not wet enough. Okay. So we can add some more with the gel pen. Adding some more flakes here and there, like, I don't care, I just want snowflakes. It's winter. Some more on a bird. Because it would be strange if it's snowing all over the place except for on the bird, like, what happened? Why is it not snowing where the bird is at? Because we want to save the bird. Afraid to mess the bird up. Well, I'm not afraid. It's not not a sales piece or anything. Just a fun, a little piece of fun. And there you have it. We're done. Woohoo. So, yeah. This one is the uncontrolled one. Let's zoom out. And this one was the more in control one. Uh, that way. And you can tell the difference. Though I must. Like I said earlier, I didn't use brush brush out on this one, just a uh, liquid watercolor on the background, so yeah, the colors of the background are aren't as vivid as on the brush out one and but yeah, overall, I like the one I made in this video better. I like the colors better. the bird looks looks nicer because it has more contrast. this one looks a bit flat, but yeah. I had fun. I hope you guys had fun too and survived my stupid rambling. Anyway, I wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a very good and artsy new year. And I'll see you in my next video in the next year.